The sun has left and forgotten me. It's dark, I cannot. Your stories see. don't define you, but how you tell Why them will. Hi, I'm Sarah Elkins, your host and chief storymaker at Elkins Consulting. For the first podcast episode of 2024, I'm sharing an excerpt from my upcoming book, Authenticity is Overrated, hopefully to be published by the end of this year. Tolerance limits our potential, but not in the way you might think. When our boys were in elementary school, I'd order dreidels, the Hanukkah spinning toy, by the hundreds. And I'd special order dozens of miniature jelly donuts, the Israeli Hanukkah treat, from a local bakery. And I'd give Hanukkah presentations to somewhere between 150 and 250 students every year. Growing up in Montana, the majority of students had zero exposure to Judaism or almost any other culture or religion outside of Christianity and Christmas. And it was important to me that our son's friends and peers have just a little bit of information about what our boys celebrated and why. I'd start with the discussion of tolerance. Now, this was especially appropriate here in Montana. I'd start with, hey, kids, why do you put blinders on a horse? To keep them from being distracted or spooked so they look straight ahead at where they're going. That's right. When a horse is focused straight ahead, they're not going to see the activity around them, and that helps keep the rider safe. When we're tolerant, it's kind of like we're wearing blinders. We're saying to people around us, you do you as long as it doesn't affect me, and then we're all good. But that means we're missing seeing the colors and experiences that other people see. What if I told you that from now on, you can only eat traditionally American food, hamburgers, hot dogs, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, No more tacos, no pizza, no egg rolls, no sushi, and definitely no pasta. Guaranteed, at least one kid in the class would start out nodding, eager to eat only those foods, but then they'd see their friends getting concerned, realizing they'd miss out on some of their favorites. Tolerance is only the beginning, I'd tell them. Tolerance is accepting other people and their cultures and the way they think. But when we embrace those differences, when we're curious about them, they bring a variety of colors, textures, and yes, flavors into our world. Just think about how boring things would be if we didn't have all of these differences around us. For the past 10 years, I've been working with individuals and teams to improve communication in the workplace. And in the last five, I've been using Gallup's Clifton Strengths, which is formerly Clifton Strengths Finder, assessment to get an idea about the language each individual speaks. Because even when we speak the same language, we often don't speak the same language, right? And any accurate assessment works for this purpose. In recent coaching sessions, I made a really important connection. I asked a client about her best friend. My best friend is like my complete opposite. She's totally outgoing and I'm kind of an introvert. Maggie is spontaneous and I like to plan things to death. She gets me out and doing things I never would have done without her. Because I kind of like routine and rules and she's kind of all over the place. I asked, what would it be like to work with her? My client stopped smiling. Oh, I don't think we could work together. It would ruin our friendship. She would drive me crazy with her energy. I realize this is common. In our personal lives, we are highly attracted to our opposites. In our friendships, and often our romantic partners, We gravitate toward people who are really different from us in terms of how they approach life. But at work, we tend to try to surround ourselves with people just like us. Why? Because it's easier that way. 
We like to work with people who are somewhat predictable, people who approach tasks the same way we do. Just like in our personal lives, our work lives can get very predictable and comfortable when we're surrounded by people who think like us, who celebrate the same holidays and eat the same foods. And that leaves no room for innovation, creativity, and personal and professional growth. That puts every decision into groupthink, every project into the same constraints. Tolerance at work is even more restrictive than tolerance in our personal lives. We can have the most diverse workforce, a completely diverse group of professionals at the table, but if we're only tolerating them, we are not embracing those differences. If we're tolerating people, we are not seeing them for the beauty they bring to our world. Using Clifton Strengths, I can predict where conflict will show up in a team. I can also predict where the best and most creative thinking will be nurtured. And I can reduce the potential for conflict among people with significantly different talents by demonstrating how those differences make us better and how to reduce the opacity of those blinders we often wear. I don't know about you, but I'm a big fan of food, every kind of food, and I'm not willing to put on blinders no matter how much safer I might feel with them. I know for sure that when I put on blinders, I'm actually putting myself and others and my community at greater risk. Without my peripheral vision, without being able and willing to see the activity around me, I can't participate in creating a more vibrant, just, an equitable world. Now it's your turn, listeners. This excerpt from my book is a reminder of the importance of embracing our differences. What have you been tolerating at work that you could approach with more curiosity instead of indifference, frustration, or fear? What difference might that make for you at work? Think about one person from your work history that you found especially frustrating to work with. Can you reduce the darkness of those blinders for just a moment to consider what that person's talents were that are different from yours? And maybe find just a few things about that person that were good challenges for you, learning opportunities that made a difference in how you see the world and how you handled a challenging situation that felt similar later on in your career. What if you reframe that story of that frustration to learn the lessons from it and find somebody who is completely different from you that works with you in a way that grows your business, that brings innovation and creativity to your days at work? If you're curious about how StrengthsFinder works to reduce conflict and tension in the workplace and increase innovation and satisfaction at work for your team, visit my website, elkinsconsulting.com, and schedule a call with me. Thanks so much for listening to Your Stories Don't Define You, How You Tell Them Will, and here's to a brighter, bigger 2024. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you just smile.